Welcome to TitanicClock.com. Beautifully handcrafted replicas from the RMS Titanic. If you bought our largest clock with complete architectural surround, then this video is for you. If you've been paying attention, it weighs 75 pounds. So the first method is the keyhole method. And each of these five pieces has a keyhole drilled hole on the back. And we supply this layout. So you just have to put the screw holes as indicated on your wall. But you better hit a piece of wood. I would find a stud, like this bottom piece, for example, weighs just under 20 pounds. The heaviest one is the top piece, and that weighs just under 30 pounds. The second method is the panel method. This is what I did in my home. And I went to Home Depot and I just bought a piece of two foot by four foot plywood. And you see it's not quite the full width of the clock. But the nice thing is from the side, you won't see any plywood because it doesn't come all the way to the edge. So here are the materials you'll need. You should also have a straight edge and some granola. Okay, I'm kidding about the granola, but I just like granola. The cleat hanger that I got will hold up to 200 pounds. So you're way over what you need. These long screws are the ones that go into your wall. Again, you should hit a stud with that. And then these little screws attach the other part of the cleat to the back of your panel, your plywood panel. These two pieces that come with the cleat hanger, they, they intersect like this. So I'll give you a better view of this later. So here you see I'm putting the, the one cleat uh, hanger portion on the back. This is the piece that I'm putting on the back of the clock. See how it has that V shape and it would go on the back of your plywood panel just like I'm laying it down here. So I'm putting in screws, no pre-drilling. You just do it by hand so you don't over tighten that way it'll really hold and uh, you know won't make the holes too big this way it's just perfect if the soft plywood it goes right in and now the piece that goes on your wall has this channel and this set that i bought at home depot comes with this little level that you just put in the groove that channel there it allows you to level this piece until your bubble is lined up properly it's not lined up properly here but you get the idea between those two black marks and again, you're using the long screws and hit some wood with that. So I'm flipping the panel over and I'm just drawing a center line as a guide as I lay out the pieces because I'm going to glue them on this panel. So now I'm making a mark on my bottom panel. You start from the bottom. I'm just making a mark on the edge so I can see it. This is the glue recommended by people who work with resin all the time. Power Grab by Loctite. I got it at Home Depot. You can get it online, other places. I've also found great success with these two glues, silicone rubber and this industrial strength E6000. And there's the E6000 new in the package. But you know what? I sometimes use all three yeah, I know. I'm not really a pessimist, but I'm, I'm practical. And you see all these materials I've glued over the years here at Haven Crest? 40 years of gluing things has taught me, you know, sometimes glues don't hold forever. Maybe they'll hold 10 or 20 years. I want it to last forever. So I use more than one glue just for insurance. So you just apply the glue and your additional glues if you desire. If you're like me and you want to make sure, add some other glues. And then just position your piece on your 
line. You've got the mark on the bottom, and you've got your center line. And this bottom piece I found from laying this everything out, um, put the pressure on, give it a little wiggle that helps squeeze the glue and kind of grips it. But um, I had the bottom piece just kind of overhang a little. And I'll show you later on that, what I'm talking about. So now we're on to the back of the honor and glory portion. Same process, pressure, a little wiggle, make sure it's lined up. Now with the third piece, the top piece, that heavy 27 pound piece, you see I'm putting the glues onto the plywood, not the piece, because it overhangs and you don't want to end up with glue all over your table or floor, whatever you're working on. Now, before you put glue on the side panels, just these pilasters, you should position them dry first, and they'll give you a chance to adjust your other three pieces while they're still movable. So you see how everything fits. You'll have to kind of adjust. You know, you might have to slide things a little bit just here and there until you get the best fit. It's not a perfect fit. Look at the capitals. There's an overhang on the inside drives me crazy. I apologize. Believe me. I When I sculpted all of this, I tried to get everything perfect, but the problem is resin shrinks. Now here's that overhang I'm talking about. Just a little bit of an overhang at the bottom, just maybe an eighth of an inch, whereas the pilasters I've got lined up square, you know, flush. I was starting to say that resin shrinks and we have a lot of different thicknesses here. Some of these pieces are very deeply cut and they're very thick. And so there are variances with the curing of this stuff and it, it you know, it just, it's not a perfect science. Um, if we could have cast it hollow, maybe it would be a little different, but we had to cast it solid because we're going to as thin as three eighths of an inch but then as thick as almost four inches. So you have wide range of thicknesses on the resin. Again, you see I'm applying the glue on the plywood for these two uh, pilasters as well. So the first two pieces, we put the glue on the back and on the next three pieces, the final three pieces, we, we put the glue on the plywood. You see, you're probably a pro by now. You're just, you know, um, we're going to let it dry for 24 hours minimum. I would let it dry even longer. So have a coffee break. I got this at the Titanic Museum. It's got um, Wallace Hartley and the other seven members of his band. As you know, they played as the ship sunk. And I, I love the gift shop there. It's This is one of the greatest museums in the world. Just a little commercial. Go see it, Pigeon Forge. Here I'm just um, painting out the plywood that shows, but the way I used it later, you'll see, it doesn't really matter. Because I put it up on top of a counter. And here it is. Put it up on a counter like this. And then I put my artifacts, my collectibles, on the counter in front. So this is like a nice backdrop. It sets the mood, you know, the feeling of the grand staircase. But then I have my real piece of the RMS Olympic wood you see down there, and you know, the, the tile from the Olympic um, pool, and a, a, a linoleum tile, and other, you know, a lot of ephemera is flat and small, like paper items and, so it works really well to put it on a counter like this where you can really see it. And then you still have a lot of great visual interest for, you know, those people that may not be quite as interested in Titanic. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for listening and happy collecting.